Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. My name is Thomas, and today we're going to be going over my professional readme.md generator. So first things first, if you're on my GitHub, you're going to see my readme file. In my readme file, I'm going to detail everything you need to know about this generator, okay? So first things first, we're going to be going down on my readme to the installation process and the usage instructions. I want for you to make sure that you fulfill everything in the installation process just to get yourself set up. And then once done, you can move on to the usage instructions, okay? It's imperative you get this done. So step one, open the cloned repository in a source code editor, such as Visual Studio Code, just like what I'm doing right now. Also, if you're looking for the repository link and you're looking at the readme, you can just quickly Click this down here and it'll take you right to it, okay? Number two, you're gonna to wanna to open the integrated terminal once you've fulfilled all this, of course, and you've done your source code editor opening. You're going to open the integrated terminal on the index.js. Thirdly, you're gonna enter node index.js in the command line. And then fourth, you'll be presented with the NPM inquiry questions through sequential order with the directory. The user must provide essential readme information in order to proceed to the next question in sequence. You're going to be prompted with sequences of questions. You are to fill them with the appropriate information for your readme, just so when everything has been completed, it will generate out which leads us to here. Once completed, a file named generated readme.md will be made. At your discretion, you can rename the generated readme.md file to the file name of your choice. You also have the option here and here for number seven and eight. Regarding future use, you may alter the prompted questions within the index.js and generated markme.js to suit your needs. So you can always go back, you can always edit the questions, and you can edit and reformat my template if you really need to, just to meet your needs in the future with other projects, etc. If you wanted to add in your own personal touch, please feel free, go ahead and do so, okay? And then number eight, which is another optional, the generated readme.md file serves as a foundation and you are not limited to altering the file, like I had said. Once generated, you may alter the document to your preferences, just like any other readme.md file. So what our goal is, is to do this. Once we've completed the generated readme file, you can always take that out of my repo. And then you can place that readme file that we've created into any other repository or assignment you want to attach it to because that is going to be the readme you're using for whichever project you have. It's not going to be for this one. It is going to be simply for the one that you want it for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the process to quickly do this. We're going to go to the index.js. I am going to open an integrated terminal. I'm going to bring my terminal down here. Great. Now you can see we're currently located within the file. You can even double check by going ls. We're currently in there. So remember what I said? We're going to be typing in node index.js in the command line and then clicking enter or return on Mac. From there, you're going to be prompted with the questions. So what is the name of your project? I'm going to name it Thomas's Demo. And then we're going to be prompted with the next question. It's going to rinse and repeat this every single time until you complete the criteria for your readme to be generated. So provide a short description by explaining the W5H, that is the who, what, where, when, and how of your project. So this is what we're gonna do.
we are going to enter in these details right here. Well, I'm just going to put a short description for now to keep it nice and simple. Prompted to the next question, what are the steps required to install your project? Provide a step-by-step -step description. Obviously, right now, we are doing a demo, so I'm just going to put step one, step two, step three, etc. Just to give you a visual representation of what it's going to look like. Now here, provide instructions and examples for usage. Include screenshots as needed. To add a screenshot, create an assets images folder in your repository and upload your screenshot to it. Then using the relative file path, add it to your readme using the following syntax. So this is very interesting. Once you created an assets image folder, you can keep it up there or you know wherever else you want in your other documentation. You can use this syntax to create a pathway for your image. So I've created this syntax. This will go directly into the readme. So it makes your life a lot more easier. In case you haven't done this before, now you know. So for now, I'm not going to use that syntax. However, I can at least put a name there to label it. So what I'll do is I'm going to type in screenshot. Done. Now, explain the guidelines for contributing to this project. Hmm, well, since it's just a demo, I'm going to put one, two, and three. Explain the necessary steps to run the tests for your project. I'm just going to type in necessary steps, just so we know where we're at on the file. And then here, which license would you like to use for this project? You can use the arrow key at this point to select an MIT license, an Apache license, a general public license, a Mozilla public license, or no license at all. It is up to your choice. For this instance, we are going to be going with an MIT license. Please enter your GitHub profile link. So for here, I believe I actually already have my profile link in this one. So I'm going to quickly just exert it and paste it in. So we're going to go back to the index. We don't really need to have that open, but I just like to do that just in case. So please enter your GitHub profile link. Whenever you do this, make sure it's exactly in this format right out of GitHub because this has been formatted in the readme that I have made so that it will perfectly go into the file and create a link to your repository so it will not have it just written out like this. It will generate a link where you can click it and it will work perfectly fine. Now we're going to enter an email address. I have a burner email address so don't worry about mailing this one. This one is a dud one. You'll never get my real one. <laughs> and there, you were prompted with the final message. Congratulations, the generated readme.md file has been successfully created. And as you can see, in the top left corner, we have the generated readme.md file. And if I click it, we have all our input in information, etc. And what I can even do is, I can click the open preview and what that will do is it will now show us a preview of the readme. We have our title, we have our license badge, description, table of contents, and if I to click anywhere on here, it'll go down to the section, but since I am in Visual Studio Code, it's not doing it now. And we have the installation instructions, the usage instructions, contribution guidelines, as mentioned here still, the test instructions, the license, which will give us a badge and link to, the questions, which will state your email address, and we'll give the GitHub link. And a nice little all-reserved 
license tag for copyright at the bottom. So like I said, that is the way on how to create it. And don't forget, you are at liberty to always rename and change the document whenever you want. So I could rename this to anything, anytime. I can name it, well, I can't for this instance, this is actually a great instance, for example. I cannot name it readme.md as I have my original one there for my project. So what you can do is you can keep the generator readme.md and you can simply click and drag it, download it, whichever way you want, into your new project, and then you'll be able to rename it in there, and then you'll be able to do any other fine-tuning edits you want. And let me demonstrate that you can edit anything you want. I'm going to go step four, step five, step six, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put these in here, and I'm going to put these in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the preview, and it's just going to demo that it actually does work, and that you can edit it whenever you want, and anything else you want to add in, you may, okay? Anyways, everyone, I just want to say, if you have any questions, now is the time. So please do let me know. Leave a comment down below and be sure to be nice to others in the comments. Um, you may like and subscribe to my channel as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. On my channel, we talk everything from coding, philosophy, gaming, and daily life. So, you know, feel free to contribute whenever you want to. Um, thank you again for watching. My name is Thomas, and you have been watching Thos Calais. Take care.